what is flow movement and why should you use it when you're teaching? So I call flow movement any kind of natural movement that your body is used to doing. Uh, some sort of natural movement, that could be walking, that could be running, that could be tapping your foot, whatever it is, something that's at a natural tempo for the body. The body is not used to moving so slowly and waiting on one foot or waiting on the other foot. Because the body isn't used to going that slowly, if you stop in the middle of a step and you give lots and lots of instructions to your students about what to do on that particular step, and you can even try this while I'm talking to you, by the time you wait maybe three to five seconds on that foot, your body has forgotten what your other foot was doing and where you came from and where you're going to next. That means that when you try to actually do the step, all of that good information that you got will be lost. It won't get applied because your body doesn't remember where you came from and where you're going. So I feel like it's more effective to teach with flow. So if I have some complicated combination that I'm trying to get people to do, some sort of complicated piece of movements, I could explain it slowly. I could say, okay, get your left, right leg free, take your right knee up so it's parallel to the floor, at the same time take your left hand up, right hand is on your hip, I want you to tap down towards the floor, at the same time you're gonna tap towards your chest, now once you get there, when you come back up with one hand, with the other hand up as well, now you're gonna switch your, and bring your feet together, and as you do that, you're gonna stick your foot out, then as your arms come down, your foot's gonna come in towards your knee, and then you're gonna go out, and then you're gonna bring both feet together, and you're gonna do it again. Now if I said to actually do that, <laughs> I think most people, after that explanation, they wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, but you spend all this time giving them all this information, but if you ask them to do it at that point, they wouldn't be able to. They can't apply it to real life. Instead, if you took the same amount of time, the same number of seconds, and you just had them tap their foot, and then you had them kick their foot, and switching back and forth, tap. This I consider flow movement, because they're moving at a normal human tempo the whole time, instead of super slow-mo. Yeah, and they're doing something that feels natural to the body. And then you can add the pieces together. So say point your chest, point, 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 and arms, and point, 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 hands up, arms. Now, two of each, one, two, one, two, one, yeah, or whatever. I'm going a little fast through the, through the transitions. I'd probably take a little more time. But the moral of the story is, by keeping people moving, you will teach more faster with fewer confused students. Um, if you try to give all of your information at once while they're hovering and waiting, that information won't get actually applied to their bodies. If you want, I'll give one more example and you can, you can tell me what you think works a little better. So, I could teach you a step where I have you step really big forward and at the same time use the heel of the left foot and collect your feet. Again, bring your feet together, you're nice and balanced. Nice big step forward on that right foot, use the heel, and as you use the heel, turn the right foot out to the side. As you collect your feet, I want you to roll up into the ball of the right foot, and open the feet so you're on the balls of both feet, and you notice I've turned one eighth to the right. Now you're gonna close the feet together, so you're gonna bring your right foot to your left foot, again on the balls of both feet. And then at this point, I want you to step back on the left foot, and as you do, I want you to turn the leg in a little bit, so you're just on the toes of the feet, and at the same time, turning a little bit more to the right. And as you bring your feet together, I want you to lower and collect both feet. So that would be one way to teach it, which is no flow. <laughs> it's going really slowly, giving too much information, in my opinion, about each step. And a lot of the time, you might have noticed when you're like this, your body forgets, like, wait, what happened? So if I asked you right now to dance that step, would you be able to? Unless you already know the step. Instead, if you get people to just flow, you tell them to walk forwards and backwards. Walk forwards, walk backwards. And walk like normal, so use your heels. When you walk forward, use your toes when you walk back. So you get them doing that. And then you help them go into the side. Tiptoe, tiptoe like you're sneaking up on somebody. I like to always try to make the movement feel like something that happens in their normal life, or maybe not normal, but something that they've done before, tiptoe, catch up on somebody. Yeah. And then I flow the movements together. I'd say, walk forward, tiptoe to the side. Walk back, tiptoe to the side. Yeah. And eventually I put the step together, so they walk forward and tiptoe, walk back and tiptoe, walk forward. I try to keep them flowing the whole time. First off, they won't get so 
bored and they'll feel like they're dancing and they'll have a better time. You can use music during more of the class and um, they'll get a better workout too. <laughs> so use your flow movement. Have a great time.